really you can broadly divide them into regenerative injections and non-regenerative injections. Well, there's five of them that are used commonly. The first is cortisone. It's been around for a long time. It's the go-to injection uh, with a lot of physicians who are injecting joints for arthritis, for instance, to try and calm down some pain. And personally, I don't use a lot of cortisone. I feel there's better options for patients nowadays. Uh, but cortisone still is used in a lot of circles. In an acutely inflamed joint or area of the body, cortisone can still be useful. It is a good anti-inflammatory. However, there are questions about its safety and especially with repetitive use over time and possibly a degenerative quality to the drug. Prolotherapy is another one that's been around for about 70 years or so. Those are usually dextrose or sugar-based solutions with other additives to try and help stimulate uh, healing and damaged tissue. Visco supplementation is non-regenerative, been around for about 20 years or so. We think it lubricates arthritic joints and probably has some metabolic effect on the joint, but the truth is we're really not certain how these uh, injections work, but they can give some relief in arthritic joints. The uh, fourth one is platelet-rich plasma. Uh, that's been big for about a decade and has a regenerative effect on tissue, tendons, joints. We have to draw some blood out from the patient and we place it in a container and then place that container into a centrifuge. The centrifuge spins very quickly and separates different components of the blood and one of the components we're interested in is called the platelet-rich plasma or PRP. And the fifth one is a stem cell procedure that really has taken off in probably the past five to seven years. Stem cells are one step further where we harvest the source of stem cells. That can either be bone marrow, it can be fat. There are uh, some external sources from stem cell banks where we can buy stem cells. With stem cell procedures that are using fat, this is called a mini liposuction. We combine that with platelet-rich plasma and we inject that into the target, again, usually under ultrasound guidance, so we know exactly where we're placing the injection. The regenerative injections all have a role in terms of stimulating tissue repair. They do it differently, but the final outcome is a stimulus to, to help repair damaged tissue. So 80% are getting positive response. 20% of patients are not getting a response. We don't yet know why, and we're still trying to understand that. And we wait six months to analyze this because it can take six months for the regenerative process to finish. I really think we have to be encouraging patients in, in most cases at least a six week to eight week period of time of working on level one. And those are the conservative interventions, therapies of various types, orthotics, bracing, some medications that can be helpful for pain and uh, inflammation and of course modification of activities allowing the person some time to let their bodies heal. In some cases could be even up to six months. The injection level is what I call level two. So we're getting more invasive, we're penetrating the skin, therefore we have some risks when we do that. And we certainly don't want to go to level three, uh, the surgery level, until we've exhausted level one and level two. But for most injuries that are acute injuries, six to eight weeks, for more chronic related injuries, could be up to six months of working on level one interventions. But uh, at that point, if patients are frustrated that they're not progressing, and as long as they've put in their homework and done what they needed to do to really try with level one, um, then we usually start thinking about level two.